Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizu. You watch my channel, Mizu14, and I'm here doing a review of Inyala Fix My Life. This is the episode of Three Daughters, One Dead Son, and A Million Secrets. This was a non emotional episode, and I just feel that what so much stuff that was compacted in this episode, it needs to be had multiple parts. Now, a lot of deep um, issues like last week with Nikita and this week with them, they need to have multiple parts because each family member needs to have some time to heal and to talk it out and um, get to gather their thoughts because it feels kind of rushed to me with this episode. But I will explain the little things that happened and it had me in my emotions a little bit because it just sucks that how a family, what I'm asking people now, would you, what is your definition of family? A family to me is like a supposed uh, family system that also support each other, love one another, help each other out when it's a crisis, care for each other, nurture for each other, bond, and to be happy and enjoy the ups and downs and get through things together. What happens when you don't have a family that does that? What happens when you have a family who don't really communicate with each other? What happens when you have a family who like, who use jealousy, who use bitterness, who use anger towards one another? cloud the judgments of what's right and what's wrong. See, this is a family of daughters and, sisters and sons and a mother that have so many secrets that cause a friction with this thing, um, with the family. Now, majority of, a lot of the friction happen with something with their youngest daughters. So let me just go back to that. Now, first, we saw Keisha. Keisha is a mother of five. This episode was mainly talking about her three daughters and her dead son. Right, so Keisha says she came to get help, to get guidance, to get advice about how can she communicate with her daughters because she's right now in turmoil with them. Like she don't have good communication with them. It's like it's the bond is not there. So Keisha said that um, her biggest thing that that happened that she found out five years ago. She found out that her freaking son Terrell sexual molested. Sexual violated, basically raped her youngest daughter, Gabby. And when she found out, her first reaction was to attack him, to kill him, which I understand what most parents would do. When you find like, well, most parents who care about their kids, when you find out that your children got molested by somebody in their family, the first reaction is anger. Get pissed off. You want to kill her for hurting the person you really love. The person you born, the birth. Somebody you came out of your body, your womb that you grow up. That got molested by somebody else who also came out of you. It's like, how do you feel? Because you had two children who this this terrible experience happened. And one was the freaking abuser and one was abused. And now one is dead, he cannot defend himself. He can't explain his actions and everything. So we find out this happened five years ago. It was brought to us that he was molested when he was younger. And also the parent, Keisha herself was molested, abused when she was younger. So it's like a pattern in the family that a sexual trauma is not happening. And they haven't been healed and helped. Since you go up with that pain experiences, it's not going to help you. If, you. if you haven't helped yourself with the situation and with your experience, with your uh, negative trauma, that it will impact your uh, interaction with your children because you haven't yourself had healed from it. So when your parents, when your children go into those things, you probably motion detach, you motion unavailable, you're not aware of the, uh, you're not focused on the signs. And it's, 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 standard between family. It's like really normal and um, it's really normalized a lot of family that were uh, parents who went through traumatic experiences sometimes don't really equip to really help their children. Not all. Some will. Who really help. Who special haven't healed for themselves usually don't have that equipment to be attached to their kids that way that they can help them when they go through the experiences. Or not knowing what to um, expect when they hear the uh, trauma experience. So her son was molested. She was molested. And then she found out five years ago that um, her youngest daughter, Gabby, got molested by her son, Terrell. Her son, Terrell, was dying with a terminal disease. He had um, sickle cell anemia. 
And when she found out, six months later, he died with that crazy disease. So it's like she couldn't really mourn his death because she was so hate anger by what he had done to Gabby. And so she hasn't really mourned um, or really grieved because she was so clouded and blinded and anger by this revel uh, revelation that she hasn't known. She didn't, wasn't even told. Now, she found out by argument between Kinesia, which is her middle child. Kinesia was her middle daughter. And Terrell, they was arguing and then she blurted it out. Basically, it got to like, hurt him in some way because uh, the animators uh, comment that when you blurted it out, you trying to hurt him by um, exposing his dark secret and what he done to Gabby, to the family, and now everybody see that he has been doing something. So they all on him. They want to attack him, like angle towards him. So he got hurt. But she said, now you didn't really say that to hurt him. You really just hurt her, which is your mother. Like, because Kanisha has some kind of feeling towards her mother. And I'll explain that later. So, Kinesia blurted out that it happened. That's how she found out. And that's how, and then her oldest daughter, Alicia, was there. Because next, after she talked to Keisha while there, because she said it had to be around when he was 13, 14 years old when this happened. And her youngest daughter was eight around this happened. So, since eight years old, she had her first traumatic experience, sexual experience, with her own brother. So when that happened, like your whole innocence is taken away. You have not lived up to learn how to fully give out your body to somebody because you thought that somebody you love, somebody you grew up um, being with in the house every day, someone who supposed to protect you, was molesting you. So you could tell how Gabby feels when she got this famous deal with her and then now and then it was fear. It was like a shame to even, to even say something. The fear to say something that she couldn't say something to her mother because she felt like the her brother was putting fear to her and saying, like, if you say something, she's not going to accept you. She's not going to love you anymore. She won't um, agree with you because nobody going to accept you or nobody going to believe you that you are the one who molested you. So you're going to keep quiet. It put fear in her. So she couldn't really tell her mother. Now, she did say something. Now, then we get, she did say something, but I'm going to go to that later. We, we have Alicia. And we have Kinesia. Alicia is the oldest daughter. Kinesia is the middle daughter. And then we have Gabby, the youngest daughter. So Kinesia is the middle child. Now, Kinesia said, was kind of alarming. And I'm going to talk about the family dynamics later. And how she feels that she'd been neglected when she was growing up. Because she felt that her mother and Gabby were so clickish. And her mother was focusing a lot on Gabby than on her. Which is... It's common in a lot of families when you get sibling rivalry, when you feel like the parent is focusing more on one and then not on the other one. So you trying to, so you get emotionally unavailable, you get emotionally detached from the family, you start hating your mother or you resenting your parent because they not focusing on you or you start acting up so they can give you some attention or you trying to overcompensate by doing something so they can focus on you. Now I'm going to tell you a little thing about my little life a little bit, how I feel a little bit. And I know this is my truth. I'm a middle child. I have an oldest brother and I have a younger brother. Growing up, not so much now, but growing up, I always did feel like I was neglected. I always feel like even though I was a good child, my mother didn't love me, don't get me wrong. It's like, the dynamic is, I raised in a household where I was the older brother and my younger brother was living together. We was living together with my mother and she was sick of him and raising us both. But I did have an older brother who lived with my grandma so she had three boys. So my mother, sometimes I feel like my mother always focused on my older brother because how the relationship was strained between those two. And then my younger brother because he was a trouble child. Trouble growing up. 
So me in the middle of the child, I feel like I have to do things to get the attention, to get the um, things, to do good at school. Sometimes I act out. I might act out here and there just to show that it's my mother focus on me. I need to get, I need something. But I never hate my brothers for it. I always love my brothers. So it's not, I never took my anger or my hatred or my neglectfulness or my brother. That's who me is. But I do feel sometimes, I know emotionally me, like sometimes I get sad or I get depressed or something because it's like, you always focusing on my other brothers. Like, what about me? I'm also here too. It's like, I make, I hurt sometimes too, thinking about a lot of things. And sometimes I can't really say much too because it's like, if I say something, I'd be selfish. So, that's how I kind of feel. So, Kanisha was like in that thing because she was jealous of Gabby. Now, she said that Gabby and her mother is so clickish, they good. They was calling her names, like call her whole sluts and everything. And Alicia explained to us is that it was like a lot of people in her school were saying that Kanisha was doing a lot of things. But it was mostly because Kanisha was with a lot of um, people. Her click was mostly the people, the thoughts and everything. And since so she was social with them, they only associated that she was doing a lot of things. So they was hearing a lot that she was out there. She was very promiscuous. She was sexually active. And so that's kind of like put a detachment for her from her younger sister and for her mother because she felt like they were not, they were judging her or they was like, negative comments towards her that made her shut down. Now, Kinesia told us that Gabby told her when she was around 11 years old and she was around 16 years old when she found out that Terrell molested Gabby. She knew about this. Alicia, the older daughter, did not find out until a year after he died. So, Kinesia was the only one who knew about her brother, the molesting Gabby. And she never said anything. She hid it to herself. Now, the reason why she hid it to herself is because she was jealous of Gabby. I guess because she also told us that Terrell was her best friend. They were 13 months apart. They always go to school together. They were very close. So imagine when she found out that Gabby told her about her brother molesting her. She somewhat didn't really take that well. Not to the sec, not to the well that she wanted to go tell her mother. Take it to the well that she kept it to herself and not say anything to her mother because she didn't want to get Gabby to help. For some reason, in my thing, when I was seeing her interaction with Gabby at first, and her motion disconnect, disconnect when she Gabby was telling her story, it seemed like she didn't really care that it happened because my best friend did this, and you, I can't stand you right now, so I can't really help you. So she kept to a secret, and she was not going to say anything until her and Terrell had an argument. And then when she blurted it out, so I guess when you had an argument, you get angry, you want to say the things to hurt the person that you're arguing about. So when she said that, that's when the secret came out. Now, Gabby don't really like Kanisha like that. Not even like Kanisha like that. It's just, she don't really, she not emotionally attached with her sister, not close with her sister because she felt that her sister should have helped her. She didn't have nowhere to go. She used to feel like since Kanisha was her older sister, she felt like going to her older sister because she didn't know how to tell her mom. That's why she didn't go to her mom first before she, when she told Kanisha that she going to her sister, it would help her and then put a stop to her brother molesting her. Mind you, Kanisha told her that Gabby told her 11 years old. That was wrong. Gabby told Kanisha when she was 8 years old. So between 8 to 11 years old for years, Kanisha knew about this and didn't say anything. So that's what made um, Gabby so emotionally detached from her family because the family that's supposed to protect her and support her and help her when things like this go on didn't say anything, kept it a secret. So her herself kept it a secret because she was like, I told someone and nothing happened. And we always taught 
and growing up now, even though she said, when something happens to you, it's, you feel hurt, you feel abused, you feel touched and anything, say something. Don't keep it to yourself. Say something. But when you do say something, then that person don't say it and don't help you. Now, how do you feel when that happens? How do, like, I want to say, encourage you to tell me, how do you feel when you was always taught to say something, speak up, don't keep in the silence. And when you speak up, especially when you're eight years old, you don't know any better when you're eight years old. To have something like this happen to you and then you told your older sister when well, you think your older sister was going to say something and then she don't keep it she don't say anything she kept it a secret and then help and at the at the while you still had a feel of telling your mom because you don't think your mom will um believe you or you accept you that's damaging for her it's damaging that it's that fact that she closed her whole body off like it just shut down it's like she she did tell us that she got two kids but she said she's not really close because she said at school, like being she'll have a lot of friends, she don't have a lot of people she connect with, she don't have an emotional romantic relationship with a lot of people because she shut down. And because her innocence was taken away from her own brother, she can't trust a lot of people. And that's like sad. Sad. Because who can you trust? That's that's the issue right there. Who can you trust when your freaking innocence and when your freaking sexual experiences was your own first flesh and blood your own sister your own brother who can you trust when that person the person your family that's why your family and that's why it, it hurts when people and it's like the game changes because it changes because usually everybody would think oh don't worry about strangers don't talk to strangers, which is true. Don't talk to strangers. You don't person people you don't know. Don't go near them. Don't be alone with somebody you don't know. Don't sit there. If you feel comfortable, move out. But at the same time, you don't tell them that the most perpetrators of the family, of the person, is somebody who, now out of ten times, the one you know. Your sister, your brother, your uncles, your aunt, your parent, your grandparents, something, whoever, who's next to you. Your cousins. And those are the main ones who will do the act more than somebody else because they know that you probably won't say nothing. You will keep silence. And your silence is the biggest weapon against towards you for not to say anything, not to speak up. So when Kalisha, well, Fika Gabby told her sister, so for her sister to help her to say something because she had the bigger voice and people would listen to her. For her not to say another thing, it shut Gabby down. So now she can't really trust anybody. Well, that was the experience because she did the right thing by speaking out, but they had hit hit it. And now my question to, to this means where the mother was at when they, all this was going on. Cause the mother said she didn't know. She didn't know what's going on until she got found out by Kenny Shields burning it out. Now, but my thing is, is that this has happened when Gabby was around 8 years old. For 8, 11 years old, you had to know the dynamics and the change, the mood of what happened with your daughters. Unless you was, especially with Gabby, when Kenesha said Gabby and her mother was cliquish. Thinking, um, the mom, Keisha, shouldn't have to recognize something because when something like that happens to you, it changes you. Your mood change, your attitude towards your family change, your um, your emotion to connectors change, your um, verbal response to your family's change. It's like that, like that. As a parent, you want to be observant to your children and notice that the signs. What now? My question is, my mind is, the Keisha was really looking at her daughter Gabby and see how she responded, how she don't. Maybe she didn't want to be around the family like that. Maybe she got distance. She was quiet. She kept to herself. She was probably like she got short temper, whatever. And that's what was like it's kind of crazy. Or she wasn't playing the sign. She was to herself. She was isolating herself. This is like signs that you need to look at when you go to your um children. And that's why courage parents is like you always, always talk to your child. It's like how do you feel? Did anybody touch you? Did anybody do anything to you? Do you feel uncomfortable? Something like that. It's not like, oh, they're too young. No, it's not about too young. It's 
they doing this to the kids very young age. This happened to this girl when she was eight years old. Eight years old. So this is time to stop. You need to talk to your kids now. It's like, what's bad touch? What's good touch? And if anybody touch you bad, please say something to me. It's like that. And if they do say to something, you got to react. You have to respond. You cannot keep it a secret. And a lot of people keep it a secret because they feel the embarrassment of the shame, how the family is, how the family gonna treat you, how outside people gonna look at you. Oh, you should not say something. They put the shame to your family. A um, she lying or they say or they blame the victim or she's lying. She want attention and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff like happening these days, and that's why a lot of people family, not only the black community. I see it's a lot in the black community, but it's a lot of other families as well. White. Asian, Latino community and stuff like that. When stuff like traumatic, traumatic experience happen like this, usually people don't say anything until they die in, until a death happened. That's when secrets came out. And now everybody realized, wow, why don't I say anything? But usually sometimes it does say something. Sometimes silence, it does happen. Sometimes nobody does say anything. Until later on, when they realize when you go into adulthood and you act in a certain way and people keep questioning the question, you, they use to put it out because you got back down the corner. And now people say, what? And then sometimes people get um, abandoned by their own family because they say, how dare you shame our family by putting the secret out? How dare you say this about your uncle? How dare you say it about your aunt? Doesn't matter. It's a lot of factors. It's deep factors. But I just feel that Kanisha failed her sister by not speaking up. Because Gabby feel that since Terrell and Kanisha was best friends, she thought that Kanisha would freaking stop Terrell. But she said, no, she did stop him. She, no, you didn't stop him. You stopped him by, eventually when you said it, blurted it out. But you didn't stop him from st um, still molesting your sister. Because you found out when she was 8 years old. This is 11 years old now. Like two or three years that you knew about this. And you didn't say anything. So because you so jealous and you had jealousy towards your sister. Because your jealousy towards your sister, you failed to protect your sister in the time that she needed you the most when she got molested by her brother. Now, that is damaging. So when we had that sit down, when they dis discussed um, how they feel about each other. And then Kanisha said that she kind of like felt that her fan sisters were judgmental towards her because her sexual behavior and everything. Her mom said, yes, she was told her that she was wrong for calling her a slut and whore. And Gabby was saying that too. She said she would feel judged by Gabby by calling her a slut and whore. She said that she was in silence because she didn't want to... Um, say anything because she couldn't want to come out that she was a bisexual and she said she likes women more than she likes men and her sexual behavior is that they think she was sleeping with a lot of men but she was actually sleeping with a girl her friend that's a girl so they was like they laughed it off and everything and I was saying like, when somebody going through that I don't think the first thing should be laughing I mean that's my person personal opinion when somebody coming out their sexuality it's like you don't, the first thing you don't want to do is laugh in response. But it does say that they said that they okay with her being who she is. They would still love her as she is. But she kept silence because she felt like they was going to judge her. But at the same time, J Kanisha was judgmental towards her sister and everything when all this was going on. So, she had part of the blame too. But she came out and she kept silence because of it because they were gay shaming and that's how it is was kids don't come out to their parents of because they gay they bisexual they um, lesbian stuff like that it's usually the fear of how their parents gonna react towards them or what their parents say or look at that gay or they walking outside or look at that gay people that's nancy it's against the sin it's it's against the bible it's not against the religion it's all this yada 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 all this other craziness they would say oh that's nancy they just be shaming themselves they won't say nothing so, so it's hard for them. So when she said that she blurted us out there, she said, yeah, I'm a bisexual. It's, they was like, it's okay. We cool with that. But I feel she felt that she couldn't say anything because they was judging towards her and she didn't want to say nothing. But to me, Kanisha 
accepted by Kanisha. And then when Gabby was sitting next to her, that's why I was saying earlier that when Gabby was sitting next to Kanisha, when she said her little truth, whatever, her, her secret, she was detached. Her body language, she was like this. Not paying attention. And everybody said, what's going on? What's wrong with her? And what's wrong with her is because her sister that she confided in really don't really care for her like that. Still had this hate towards her, jealousy, resentment towards her sister because she felt like her sister had more um, tension towards her. So, Gabby was like, bullcrap because to me, Gabby is the one who's the most damaged out of everyone. Yes, Kanisha had her little silence. She felt that like when she was growing up, when she was going to college, her mother wasn't there for her like she was there for Gabby. And at least because Gabby got a daughter, Gabby said no. Her child, Gabby said no. Mommy was struggling. We were struggling a lot. And there's a lot of, it's happening a lot of poor homes. I grew up in a single family household. We didn't have a lot of money. So sometimes we had to go sometimes stretch or eat. My mother would not eat. So to make sure we would eat. Sometimes we go over lights. She couldn't pay the light bill sometimes. She didn't have good money, a lot of good pay. So we had to grow up poverty. And poverty does affect the emotional behavior of children and growing up. Because it's like you want to have things like your rich counterparts have. And you can't have that. So sometimes you grew up with the different mentality. And how the other people have. And so you, when you feel like you don't get supported. Or you don't have enough. Or uh, they can't support you. Or they can't pay for your college. Or they can't do this for you. They can't look out for you. It does damage you when you see other people who get the um, services. Or you get help. Or they get parents who could throw money at you. And you don't have nothing. So Kanisha feel that she wasn't supported. But Gabby said that mom. I was got cut. She couldn't afford it. And it was like. She did her best to take, uh, take care. And then what she did have. She does was giving you stuff. So. Kanisha had this hate resentment towards her mother for because she felt like her mother wasn't there for her. And that in turn triggered down for her that means that her mother was always there for Gabby. So she internalized that as that or she favored Gabby more than me. And that's how usually I don't know I'm not saying all the middle child, but most middle child when the family dynamics are gonna explain that. Usually the middle child does feel like they neglected because they in the middle and there is a egg spectrum. It's like the youngest get a lot of attention sometimes. The oldest is done what they need to do. They out the house. They do what they have to do. They not they are not focused on. So the middle child is like, what about me? So this was touching and damaging, to say the least. And it was a lot impacted. And I um also like I was saying the fan dynamics, older middle is youngest. It's like sometimes the older child is like the protector of the family and there for each other and do that so like Alicia wasn't there it was around like that because she was I think she was in and out she was going to college or school and stuff like that so she didn't really was in the house that much to know what's going on but so it's like Kanisha and Gabby was like in my um, situation with me and my younger brother that Kanisha was like the oldest in the household when Alicia was out away and doing something and Gabby and she looked up to her young older sister which is the middle child so the dynamic between those as a middle older daughter with the younger sister and how the interaction was done was strained because their internal strife was between each other. And since they couldn't since the big thing in between the family was miscommunication, the communication was forced, they was um broke, broken between the family. And since they not in the same page, they can't heal because they all had different stories on how that one traumatic experience that happened to Gabby, Gabby, was different. They did, they did this little exercise of how they got all scared by different people that came in. They all had different answers. This is exactly the same experience as that. When Gabby had this experience and she, this happened to her and everybody had different accounts. So if they're not in the same accord, they can't heal. And then they had this last little thing where Iyana had them talk to Terrell because even though he's dead or gone his presence the elephant in the room is still there so they each said what they think except for Alicia they each said what they need to say toward Terrell how you took her innocent like Gabby so you took her innocent away for her 
she still love you but still she hurt about what you done and she never think you was gonna do something like that and she looked up to you and she wanna move on and get past this because she need to heal her pain and the mom said she couldn't mourn her that much now she she still love him and she forgives him and stuff like that move on and Kanisha said she said she didn't even think that her, her best friend would do something like this but at the same time she didn't say anything to help so she really like harboring the fact that it sucks that happened to my sister but my best friend is gone so it's blame my sister for my best friend leaving even though he was sick and the reason why uh, the mother was like Keisha the mother said that she don't understand why because Ayana said because he was molested because he didn't know what to do because he was dying in his dying breath it just excuse his behavior what he done was wrong and they would say that he should have been in jail they should say he should have been in jail because he did what he had to he did that and it was wrong for him to do that and he should have paid for his crime because that's unacceptable and Gabby should have got the counsel that she needed to heal and she didn't so she because she didn't heal it caused the friction in the family and because she that like yeah they're saying because he was sick because he didn't know what to do when he's in a dying deathbed not knowing when he gonna die he had nothing to lose so he did what he had to do to do what he had to do and then he died and left his family broken and it was like I said this this episode was very emotional it took me to loop especially with Gabby because I feel connected with her because I don't know she needs the most counseling help yes with the Kanisha story about her coming out yes she could get help and she gonna get accepted her family accepted her so it could heal a little bit and hunting that her family bond between her and mother need to work together better but the one who mostly needs the help, the one who needs that guidance, who needs that counseling, that more therapy, is Gabby. Because she was the youngest daughter. She's the one, who, she looks up to her sisters. She's the one who wants to learn, who, who at the least learned to learn. Her childhood was taken away from her. She didn't even have a childhood because her own brother took her childhood away from her. So she can't grow. So she had to grow up learning things on her own and now a piece of her died when she got molested by her brother and that's just sad that's sad like I said um it's damaging when family doesn't speak up when family keep things in the secret when family don't help you one another when family you speak up you tell them and they shut you down they don't believe you or they they throw you out and it's like a lot of stories I was reading comments about People saying their family just owned them because they spoke up. They true. And just owned them. Don't say anything. Be ashamed what people say. They um, don't want to get their help. They want to be embarrassed. I say you will go you will you will be so focused on that, but instead of helping what's in your family. That's why I say sometimes blood doesn't make you a family. Sometimes the bond between people you have, the friendship you make with people who you know who cares for you, no matter what happens, makes you a family. Just because you blood doesn't mean they all automatically good for you. And sometimes the blood family could be more toxic than somebody you don't know. Somebody who just met, who become a friend, who became like a family to you. So like I said, family is the person that puts a love, who puts a nurture, who puts a um, bond towards you, who puts to help you with ups and downs, who puts to lift you up supposed to guide you not not um hurt you not damage you not turn you down not curse you out not um not kick you up kick you when you're in the lowest point and when, people, when you have family that does that that's when it's time for you to distance yourself and get yourself to heal and also with the family that had generations of generations of this same pattern when this family members, they all had been molested so far. And Kanisha said her first sexual experience was when she was raped. So for me, when she said that, I said, you knew firsthand how rape could do to somebody. So when you know you got your sister having the same experience 
by your own brother and you don't speak up, that just says some violence towards you. That says how much deep jealousy you had towards Gavin. The fact that you know firsthand how this is for somebody you know, and then this is your own brother. And the Gabby is like, it's a uh, dead line between you loving him, but at the same time, you know that he did was wrong and you hate him at the same time. But for you to went through a rape experience yourself, and then you probably didn't inhale or whatever. And then your own sister gone going through this and you don't speak up because whatever reason, because your jealousy towards her was very damaging. That's why I was like with Kinesia. Yes, I understand her story, whatever, but at the same time I can't really really i kind of put the blame on her and I'm kinda of like indifferent towards her because how dare you not say anything? How dare you not help your younger sister? Your deep hatred will towards her was that deep for you not to help her like that. That's really, that was really damaging to me. And when I felt Gabby, Gabby needed her most help. She needed to follow up. She needed therapy sessions to make her heal. Because at the end, she said she couldn't really fully forgive her brother for what she done to her. Even though she's trying. And that's that. I was like, this is really damaging. This is really much. Tell me your story about what happened. Did you... Did you went through a certain similar situation? How do your family dynamics are? Put it down in the comments. Also hit the red subscribe button so you can get more updates on my videos. So you also hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading new videos. I'm pushing out videos every week. So a lot of other videos is kind of behind. I love it. I'm like like um have a have nice hit the floor black and cool queen sugar stuff like that. I will put those videos up soon. Maybe I might double some videos together. So I will get them stuff up. But please hope y'all like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. My name is Tom Mizzle. My um, channel is Mr. 14. I'll talk to y'all all later. Peace.